example of international correlation studies. This is the total dietary fat in terms of how many grams per day, and this is the age-related instance of uh, breast cancer per 100,000 population, okay? And you, you can look at the United States, United States, uh, you know, Ireland, Switzerland, New Zealand, Denmark, UK, Netherlands, and here, Thailand, El Salvador, Taiwan, Japan, Philippines, Colombia. Tremendous difference in cancer instances of breast cancer correlated with the fat. However, I cautioned you earlier, correlation does not necessarily mean causal relationship. Okay, there's correlation, make you think, okay? But this is the interesting one way to show the disparity. So is it a fat, is it a carb, is it a total calorie? Uh, the link in studies, I just say that between fat and cancer is not consistent. So is it a carb? This is an interesting statement. This is a book I mentioned earlier, and I know there's some uh, discussion in the chat room. What book I mentioned is a diabetes solution by Dr. Uh, uh, Blocky. Uh, uh, okay, anyway, by, by a physician who uh, turned into a physician in his uh, late 40s. He was an engineer before. He's a diabetic himself and he studied how to, on his own body, how to control diabetes. But anyway, he made a statement, the source of fat in American is carb. The bottom line is all the nutrients, whether it's a fat, whether it's carb, whether it's protein in the body, convert from one to the other. Our body is very capable, it's a factory. We eat a lot of carb, the carb, the body will convert a carb to fat and to protein. Interchangeable, right? We need all the building blocks. So the, uh, the source of fat in American carb. When we eat too much carb, we turn that to fat. Depot, energy depot, deposit. We need to look at a total dietary pattern rather than focusing. For many years, the research, the debate has been, is it too much fat causing cancer or what? But now we're, we're really at this point that we should look at a total dietary pattern. Nutrition is a total dietary pattern. Don't just focus on one macronutrient, for instance, too much protein, too much carbon, too much, too much fat. And likewise, don't focus on one micronutrient, for instance, vitamin E, selenium, vitamin C, vitamin A, so forth, so on. Most of the prevention studies have failed when you focus on supplementing one or two micronutrient, like I said earlier. This is interesting for you to think about, okay? And just show you how diet is complicated and how diet intersects with cancer. Recent European study I read uh, recently, uh, done by a Spanish uh, investigator, showing if you eat before 9 p.m., uh, eating before 9 p.m., and uh, you eat uh, more than two hours before you go to bed, uh, this will decrease the risk of cancer. So this is what I said earlier, I believe, it's not just how do you eat it, what do you eat, it's also when you eat it. And the diet nutrition is so challenging because of that. There's so many factors, okay? So many factors. And probably because, probably because, I, I don't know how to explain it, this is just a study, okay? Probably because if you eat very close to bad time, you probably will form more fat because your body becomes sedentary, your body saying you don't need energy, we don't need to burn calorie, or the energy go to depot, transform to fat, right? We don't need to burn that, burn that many calories when you sleep. And the other, the other thing may be, you know, we need to look at a study, whether it's more people have more reflux, more esophageal cancer or what, I don't know, okay? But this has clinical significance because in Southern Europe, you know, those people eat late. They eat a late supper. <laughs> they also drink, okay? And then they go to bed, <laughs> okay? So this, this has meaning, you know, whether they should look at it, their dietary habit. When do you eat it? How do you eat it? What do you eat? 